Hello, welcome to another time of getting in God's Word. And today I'll be talking about divorce. And that's not a normal topic that I would be speaking of. But for the last, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years, um, there isn't a couple of months that doesn't go by without somebody asking me about my opinion on divorce and whether it's okay to get divorced and so forth. And um, so recently a friend and I started talking about this subject matter and really looking at the scriptures that talk about adultery, talk about divorce, talk about remarriage, because all those things come into play when we're talking about divorce. So, um, so my stance on it has changed some. So let's just get into the Word and, and see what the Word says. It's not about our opinion. It's about what does the Word say. Okay, so let's look at that. 1 Corinthians 7.15 says, But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such. But God hath called us to peace. 1 Corinthians 7.15 So let's just look at that verse for a minute and decipher it. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. So, if two, the two of you are married, and it doesn't matter if it's the male or the female that is unbelieving, but if they're not a believer, they're not a follower of Jesus Christ, and they want out of the marriage, they want to leave, God's Word says, let them go. Okay? So that's the first part of that. The second part of it is kind of interesting. So let's just really look at that. A brother or sister, so that means the believer is who we're talking about, is not under bondage and such. So if that non-believer leaves, you're not in bondage anymore. Well, what bondage is this talking about? We're going to look at that in a few minutes. So let's go into another scripture. Matthew 19, 9 says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife except for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. So, if you get a divorce, it's saying, except for the reason of adultery, this is in Matthew, and marry someone else, you are committing adultery. So, but in Corinthians, we've got yet another piece of the puzzle of what to do in cases of marriage and um, an unbeliever. So those are two types of things going on here. So let's look at Hebrews. Hebrews 13, 4 says, Marriage honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. That's Hebrews 13, 4. So if you are commit adultery, God's going to judge you. You know, and you're probably thinking, well, why would he, you know, why is that written there? Let's continue on looking because the Word explains the Word. So let's go on to Mark 10, 11 through 12. And it says, And he saith unto them, Whosoever put, shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and marry another, she committeth adultery. Now here it's not talking about anything about either one of them being a believe, one being a believer and one being a non-believer, nor does it talk about um, adultery as far as fornication. One of the spouses having sex with somebody else outside of the marriage. It doesn't mention that at all. Okay, so this is just purely, I want to get a divorce. If for some other reason, then adultery, then fornication, sex outside of the marriage. So he, he's saying that if you do that and you marry someone else, you're committing adultery on that spouse. It's not saying that you can't divorce them. It's saying that if you remarry, then it is adultery. Let's continue on. Luke 16, 18 says, Whosoever putteth away his wife and marry another committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. So, Anyone who's marrying someone who is divorced, doesn't matter which party it is, if this is a divorce outside of the fact of adultery or outside of the fact that the non-believer wanted to go, then God's Word says it is adultery. Okay? 
For the woman which hath a husband is bound by law. Did y'all hear that? Bound. We're talking about bondage. We're talking about that you are um, bound. You are in bondage to each other. Okay? For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to the husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if while husband liveth, she be married to another man, she'll be called adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married another man. So here, if the man dies, she can remarry. And she is not an adulteress. But one of the things I found very interesting was at the beginning where it talks about that you're in bonds or bondage or bound to your spouse when you're married to them. But that's very interesting when you look at 1 Corinthians. Because 1 Corinthians says, A brother or sister is not under bondage in such, but God hath called us to peace. So let's look at that whole verse. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Okay, so if the unbeliever wants to leave and not be in that marriage again, let them go. But here it says that that brother or sister is not in bondage to that person. So in that case, I believe that these two scriptures put together are saying that that person can remarry because they're not in, bound to that person. Okay, and this one is talking about when you are bound to them, you can't marry unless the other person is dead. And, but in the other scripture is saying that let them go and you're not bound to them. So that is an exception to the rule that it's not your fault if you're a believer and your spouse refuses to believe and doesn't want to believe, but they want to leave. Let them go and you are not bound by the law to that person and it's as if you never were married and some people call that kind of divorce an annulment which isn't a divorce is just a um, parting of the ways I found that very interesting now let's look at another scripture and this is Matthew 5 27 through 28 and it says ye have heard that it was said by them of old time thou shalt not commit adultery but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Okay. And I find this very interesting coupled with another scripture in a minute. Because we all know that Christ holds us to a higher standard. And that sin is sin in the heart. Whether it manifests in the flesh or not. And you're probably thinking, how can she say that? Well, Scripture says it. Let's look at it. Okay? First, we're going to look at Matthew 15, 19, which says, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, and blasphemy. So, out of the heart is where this stuff is perceived or comes from. Because remember, Scripture tells us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your sin is out of the heart. Okay? It's not a passing thought. Let's look at another scripture. James 1, 17, I mean, James 1, 14 through 15 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Hold on right there. It bringeth forth sin. It doesn't say that you've done anything. It's saying that it is conceived in the heart. It is now a seed in the heart. And that is the sin. And then it goes on to say, And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. James 1, 14 through 15. So I have a few questions for you guys. So we can kind of pan this out in our mind and, and understand this whole topic. What should you do if an unbelieving spouse wants to leave? They don't want to have the marriage anymore. They don't want to be a part of God. They don't want to worship God. They don't want to be a believer. Uh, what do you do? You let them go. And you are not bound to them anymore according to God's word. You let them go and it's as if you were never married. All right, second question. Are you under the bondage of law or an oath if they leave according to 
the verses that I've read to you. And I just spoke on that a minute ago. No, you're not. If that unbeliever leaves a believer, you are not bound to that unbeliever. It's as if you had never married. Okay? Number three. Question number three. If you divorce your spouse, when is that okay according to the word? So if you're going to get a divorce, when is it okay? Well, God's Word says that He would rather us never get a divorce, that it would always be work out. But He gave provision for that because He saw that, you know, it was really hard to ha have that relationship when um, adultery has taken place. So when can you get a divorce? When um, can you divorce your spouse according to this? Adultery. That's the only reason why you can divorce it. Because in the other case... When it's the non-believer decides to leave, he's not considering that divorce. He's considering that as you are no longer bound to them. He doesn't even call it divorce. It's that you're released from that bond. It's kind of like when a slave who is in bonds to their master for a certain period of time, they've been loosed of their bonds. They weren't divorced from their master. They were loosed from it. So... That's a little bit different than a divorce. So, I found that to be quite interesting. According to Matthew 19, 9, can you remarry and if and it not be divorce? Huh? Can According to Matthew 19, can you remarry and if not... What? Okay, this is me pre-doing stuff and ask questions. According to Matthew 19, let's look at that. Matthew 19, 9, and see what it says. It says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. So the question is, can you remarry even if it's not adultery? No. Can you divorce? Yes. Which is kind of interesting because it doesn't say you can't divorce, that you can't separate from the other person, that you can't live in separation or you can't be divorced. It just says that you can't remarry because by law you are still bound to that person until they die. Okay? It's different than having the unbeliever who wants to leave because then you're, you're not under bondage in that situation. So I found that all that to be quite interesting. So let's look at another question that I put down in reference to this to try to bring it home. Um, what are the reasons you can remarry and it not be adultery? So what did we say? Death of a spouse is one. If the spouse dies, then you're no longer bound to that person and you can remarry. If the non-believer decides they want to leave, God's Word says you're no longer bound to that person. Okay, same language as if in a death. You're not bound to that one. What is the third reason that you can remarry if you divorce? Because God's Word said it except fornication. So if they have had sex with somebody else, you can remarry. If they're dead, you can be remarried. Or if they left because they don't believe and don't want to be with a believer, you are not held to that bond anymore. You are released from it. So those are the three reasons that you can get remarried and it be okay in the sight of God. Now, isn't that interesting? So for those of you who um, have talked to me in the past about this subject matter and wondering what to do, this is what I believe. I mean, I've searched the scriptures. I've looked at this. I've really scrutinized over these things and have come to that conclusion that um, when the unbeliever departs, you're not bound to them anymore. And that puts you in the same position as it talks about not being bound by the law to a husband anymore. So it's kind of like the death one. And that's just kind of interesting. Even though he didn't die, um, he did. Because... When you became a believer, it's no longer you that live, but Christ that lives in you. And so, 
if your spouse is unwilling to be a part of that and wants to leave, God's Word says, let him go because um, you are not equally yoked. It, how can two walk together unless they um, be equally yoked, okay? If you're not equally yoked, you're always divided. And so he doesn't want you bound to that and be enslaved to a sinner. Um, because it can bring you down. So you're going to be ha constantly having to try to um, feed yourself, keep uplifting yourself more than a regular believer would have to when they're in agreement with their spouse. When the two are one and Christ is first, it makes a whole different kind of life between you and your spouse and God because God is first and with God being the first of everything, it creates unity between you. When you and your spouse don't have it, it creates division. So, in those cases, ladies who I've told before, keep sticking in there and you can do it. Sorry. If you want to leave because he wants to leave, let him go. If she wants to leave because you're a believer, let her go. Don't keep trying to hold on to her. God doesn't want you to. Let them go and live the life that God has for you. And for those of you that are out there that are divorced because your spouse committed adultery on you, um, had relationship with another person, you know what? If you want to remarry, go ahead. You know what? But don't just marry, flip it. Let it be the one that God called you to. He's going to tell you who he wants you to marry. And that will be a wonderful blessing for you and him. But as Paul said, you know what? It's even better not to be married at all. Because then you can, um, you know, it's a different relationship with the Lord. You don't have the other one that you have to consult with. But you know what? Even with me saying that, you know, if you truly are married to who God has you for you, you're really supposed to be one. So there shouldn't be any arguing or fighting if you feel led to go to Africa for two years to work with whoever. You know what? The Lord's going to work on that spouse's heart at the same time. And when you open your mouth and say what you know God is calling you to, they'll be like, oh, yes, he's been talking to me about the same thing. That's because you're one. Okay, and so that's how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be, you know, I got to talk my husband into doing this or I got to talk my wife into it. She won't go anywhere with me and I just want to serve the Lord. You know, that stuff is terrible. So, you know, God wants us to put him first. And if that means we have to get rid of other things in our lives, including our spouse, I know that sounds awful. You need to do it um, because God is most important. So if that unbelieving spouse wants to leave, let him go. If that unbelieving spouse is hindering you from doing the work of the Lord, let him go. Whether it's a him or her, you know, it's okay. Because God wants you to put him first. So that's my message for you today. Uh, for some of you, it may be a little bit hard to swap. Um, but, you know, like I said, I've been asked about this again recently. and at, Actually, I was just asked about this this morning. Which is unbelievable because we were just talking about this, I think it was two days ago. And I was like, you know what, I really need to do a video on this because I've had so many people ask me about this thing. And it's funny, before I got a chance to actually upload, do a video live like this and talk out what um, the Word says about it, I get somebody else asking me about it and what should they do and how should they handle that situation. Well, you know what? If it's that unbelieving spouse, let them go. If it is um, adultery, let them go. If it is somebody who just won't um, allow you to do your work, let them go. And and God will work through you. And I mean, I'm not saying that that won't be a hurtful thing, but you know what? It it can be hurtful because you'll feel like something failed but you know what it's not failure it's peace because now you'll have peace in your heart you'll have peace with God because you and he are one 
and a spouse with you are supposed to be one with the two of you too and and it's supposed to be that new form of trinity trinity both of you in christ and um no it's not about failure it's about putting christ first nothing else comes first but christ so i hope that helps somebody out um it's a little bit of a new way of thinking for me, but as I was telling uh, the person that was looking through the scriptures with me, and we were discussing them and talking, it was a really good conversation that, you know, I'm at peace with with this. Because um, before, when I was looking at the scriptures, and it was very Old Testament bondage kind of thing, and I felt so um, yuck and so bound and so, I don't have the word um, like in bondage, when I would tell people that, you know, you had to stay in bondage. But this feels so, so free, and it feels so good. And not that divorce is good by any means. I mean, I've never been divorced, but I mean, seriously. That's not something, I'm not advocating, whoa, let's go get a divorce. <laughs> that is not what I'm saying at all. So please don't misinterpret what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to say that if you have a situation... If you have a spouse that is unbelieving and they want to leave, let them go. I'm saying if your spouse has committed adultery on you and it, and you're having a really hard time getting past this and it's something that's reoccurring. Oh, I want to go back just a little bit. Something that I didn't touch on here is if you remember the scripture, the sin is in the heart. Okay, even if it hasn't been a flesh act. So I believe, this is my belief, and the way I'm perceiving that the word says, that even if the person hasn't done it in the physical, and they've done it over and over again in the spirit, in their heart, they have committed adultery. God's word says that if a man lusteth after a woman, he has already committed adultery in his heart. And God's word says that that's where the sin is, is in the heart. He doesn't talk about the flesh committing the sin. The scripture talks about the sin is the heart. And it isn't even mentioning necessarily adultery. It's talking about sin, period. So, do I think that it's okay to divorce in situations of pornography? If you have a spouse that is addicted to pornography and this is bound in their heart and it is their God because they spend a lot of time with it. They spend a lot of money with it. Do I think it's okay to divorce them? Yeah. I think it applies to the scriptures that we just read. I mean, we can look at it again and look at a couple of those scriptures, but the scripture says that it's in the heart. It's the heart. It's the heart. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. James 1, 14 through 15. Um, and here, Matthew 5, 27 and 28 says, Ye have heard that I have said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now, this is just talking about looking at a woman to lust after her. This isn't even talking about looking at pornography, looking at tons and tons of pictures and videos of naked people or people having sex. I mean, this takes it a whole nother level than just like, oh, baby, she looks good. Mm, I wouldn't mind having that one. It makes it a whole much bigger thing. I mean, we are in our minds going through the act and visualizing that we're taking part of what we're seeing there. I mean, come on. So, I think that it does apply. That's the way that I interpret what I'm reading. Um... Again, so I hope this helps somebody out there about a situation that you're in. And again, like I said before, I am not advocating let's just go throw a party and have divorces here and there and everywhere. That's not what this is about. This is about bad relationships, bad situations, people who are not living for God, 
that are committing adultery, that don't want Christ, and don't want to be in a relationship with those that do want Christ. Okay? So, again, I hope this helps somebody out there. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to answer you. Or if you feel like I've missed the mark and you want to show me some scriptures that, you know, show it a little bit differently, send it to me. Call me up. Contact me. I'd be happy to listen. Again, I uh, ho hope this helps someone. And, and this is completely different kind of subject matter than I typically talk about. But we're going to end it the way I usually do. And that is, if you need healing. Put your mind or your hand on that spot right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life into your body. Body, you are healed and whole in Jesus' name. Body, function correctly now. Headache, there's a headache right behind the left eye. In the name of Jesus Christ, migraine, be gone that is trying to come up. You go back out the same way you came in in the name of Jesus Christ. Nose, it's like right down about here and comes down to the side and into the sinuses in the name of Jesus Christ sinuses be cleared pain in the nose be gone now in the name of Jesus Christ right here at the very back of the neck just underneath the scalp not even to the shoulder tops of the shoulders in the name of Jesus Christ pain be gone now vertebrae function correctly bend that neck right now Come on with me. Up and down, side to side. Gone. You feel that? Amen. All right, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we've got a right foot on the top of the foot. Back from the toes, before the ankle, right there, kind of like almost a above the arch so here's the arch on the top part of the foot in the name of Jesus Christ I speak life into that foot you are healed and whole in Jesus name now stomp that foot stomp it thank you Jesus thank you for that healing we have a left shoulder a rotator cuff injury in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life into that. New rotator cuff right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Pain be gone now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want you to lift your arm up and down. Up and down. Forward and back. Give it a nice big roll. Now do it again. Now higher. Yes, that's right. Forward and back. Give it a big roll. Good job. And you have a blessed day. And I'll see you next time.